Hey guys, in this video we're going to continue our Cubase 12 tutorial series by going over audio recording, editing, punching in and out, and comping. In the last videos we went over installing the program and a little bit of navigation of the software. The first step to recording audio is making sure you have an audio track set up in the project zone. If we're starting with a blank view, we can right click on the track section and select to add an audio track. We can also press the plus button in the top left of the tracks panel. This will launch the add track window. From the add track window, select the icon for audio track. We also have our options for MIDI, instrument tracks and effects tracks, but we'll cover those later. I'll create one track with my guitar in mono input for the direct guitar signal and a second track with the 11 rack LR stereo input for the process guitar signal. The first one will be named Bass DI and the second Bass Amp. The first configuration should be mono and the second track stereo. I'm using a recording technique where I record the process sound but also record a direct guitar signal along with it. This allows me to go back and reprocess the guitar sound using different amp settings later if it didn't sound right in the mix without having to redo a good performance. Let's start with the default and most simple recording functions. In the bottom left corner we can see our record modes. The left side is set to punch in out and start at cursor. For the right it's set to keep history when we record over top of something. To be able to record any tracks, we need to arm them to record. In a digital audio workstation like Cubase 12, recording only takes place on tracks that are armed to record when we press the record button. That way we're not recording over all the tracks at the same time. To arm the track to record, press the circle button in each track and it will turn red. Then all the red tracks will record when we press the record button in the transport. The other thing we want to do for setup is set the metronome to the project timing and in this case I'll set it to 135 beats per minute instead of 120. Then press the button to the left of the metronome indicator to turn on the metronome and the second button here to enable the count in. You can choose to start the recording rate at zero or give yourself a few bars buffer before playing. In our current mode the recording will start at the cursor position because we haven't set anything up to punch in and out yet. We can press record to start recording and the track will turn red. We'll see the clip lengthening and the waveform being recorded on the screen. Once we're done, press the stop button and the clip will be saved. If we don't like that clip, we can press the undo button or use the object selection tool and press the delete button on the keyboard to remove it. After that, we can reset the cursor position and start again. Now let's try a different recording technique called punching in and out. In this mode, the playback will start before it is recording and then it will start recording for a certain section and end at the end of it. First, we have to enable the punch in button on the transport at the bottom and set it to a certain position. In my case, bar 5. I'll set the punch out button to activate it as well and put it past the ending of our recording. We can see along the top timeline there is now a red punch in and punch out location for recording. To get recording in this mode, we just press the play button instead of the record button. With punch in and punch out activated, Cubase 12 will automatically start the recording at the specified time and end it at the punch out time. If you press the record button by mistake, you'll see that the timeline jumps right to the punch in time instead of allowing us to only play back the music before it. Once you're done, make sure to turn off the punch in and out points as they will interfere with the playback process by recording over the take each time. The next thing we'll go over is cycle recording. Cycle recording will allow us to record multiple takes of the same section of the song, then break up that audio and select our favorite parts into one composition. An important thing to note with cycle recording is that it's based on the left and right locator positions rather than the punch in and out times. So we can have a punch in and out section within the cycle and it will just record that section. 
I'll keep the punch in and out to bars 5 to 21 and set the right locator to bar 22 so that it can record slightly past that section. Cycle recording allows us to save time by recording multiple takes without having to click the buttons on the keyboard to restart everything. Like last time, we'll press the play button to record since punch in is active. We also have to make sure the cycle mode is turned on in the transport. The next thing to consider is whether we are in keep history mode or cycle history and replace. With the recording on the track, keep history mode will not remove that and will record over it. In cycle history and replace, we'll keep all the new cycles and delete the original that was there before we recorded. Finally, in replace mode, it will only keep the last cycle so you would have to stop the recording immediately after a take you like. Let's give the cycle recording a try. Again, to clarify the settings, we're in punch in out, start at left locator, and keep history. If we did this with cycle record, we would actually only keep the last recording the way this is set up right now. That's because the start and stop time of the punch in and out are within the locator positions and not at the same time as the locator start and stop. So it's cycling but not continuing the recording, and considering it like a new recording each time it starts. With it set this way, we have to have it on keep history to not lose all those takes every time it cycles back again. Once we're done our last take, press the stop button. Our tracks will now show this little diagonal line section indicating that there's an overlap. If we want to see all the recordings, we need to press the lanes button on the far right of the track. This is the one that looks like three rectangles. Now with this expanded, let's go over how lanes and comping works. Basically, the idea is that we're selecting the best parts of each recording to make one really good final recording to play on the track. We have multiple takes, but they're not all playing at once. By default, Cubase 12 will play the last recorded take and mute everything else. It prioritizes takes based on what's in the bottommost lane. Keep this in mind if you ever accidentally overlap takes. To select different parts, the first thing we want to do is split up our take into sections. We do this with the split tool that looks like a pair of scissors and that's found in the top toolbar. With this in sections, we can now use the comp tool that looks like a hand. This selects which of the clips will be active and overrides the bottommost priority that we just talked about. We can see the active takes are darker and the inactive ones are a little more faded. The waveform in the track at the top reflects these changes in selected clips. Now let's save a copy of all the takes by clicking the drop down next to the track name and duplicate versions. That will keep all the takes in a different version because now we're going to remove all the excess audio and clean up the transitions if needed. We'll keep working on V1, then select the audio for the track with the select tool in the toolbar and go to the audio, advance in the top menu and delete overlaps to cut down to one audio track with no more lanes. Now we can go edit and crossfade each of these clips to smooth out the transition. Before I crossfade, I'm going to turn off snapping in the top panel with a button to the left of the grid. That way I have more control over the length of the crossfade, and I'm also going to show you how to adjust the position of a split between two clips. With snapping disabled, we can use the object selection tool and click and drag the transition between the two clips. This will lengthen and shorten the corresponding tracks to change the split location. Don't click and drag the center square as that's used for repeating the clip and looping it.
Now let's look at crossfading. I'll switch to the range selection tool in the toolbar and highlight the section that I want to crossfade. Use a short crossfade just in case there are any clicks or pops from the levels being slightly different. This usually takes care of any of those issues. To add a crossfade, press the X key on the keyboard. The last thing to cover in this video is pretty simple, and that's fading and trimming clips. You may want to do this for some of your clips if there's extra noise at the beginning or end to get rid of it and transition down to silence. To start, use the object selection tool that looks like the cursor in the toolbar. To trim a clip, move your mouse over the bottom left or right corner of the clip at the beginning or end, click the square and drag it towards the center. Like crossfading earlier, you might prefer to do this without snapping enabled for more precise control. If we recorded our clips while punching in, the very beginning of the audio may sound cut off and abrupt. Luckily with punch in and out, Cubase 12 does actually save a little bit of audio before the punch in time started, so we can trim this out to capture the entire start and fix that even though it didn't look like it was recorded. To fade a clip, we do the same thing with the square at the top, and we'll see a diagonal line appear for the fade. This defaults to a linear fade. Once the fade is there, we can double click above and to the outside of the diagonal line, so in the top left for a fade in, or the top right for a fade out, and it will open a fade window. We can use this to control the shape of the fade and the timing so we don't necessarily need to use a linear fade. Thanks for checking out this video on audio recording, editing, and using multiple takes in Cubase 12. If this video was helpful, don't forget to give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and follow us on social media to keep up on all our new content.